When asked about next season's MVP, Jason Tatum predicted himself and also brought up his MVP chances to Sports Illustrated. So ESPN's Kendrick Perkins used the opportunity to teach us what the word selfish meant and describe Tatum as just that. So what's your word for Tatum wanting to win MVP? Oh, selfish. Selfish. He's selfish. Oh. Seeking or concentrating on one's own advantage, pleasure, or well-being without regard for others. Boxing Tatum in. That was Perk flip-flopping from a take where he implied Tatum should have been more selfish. Is he the best player on the floor last night? Hell no, he wasn't. And look, I understand he had, what, 36 last night, 12 rebounds. He should have had 50. We're going to look at how the hate's poured in consistently over the years leading up to nowadays for the most recent champions to an obscurely excessive decree, specifically Tatum and Brown. Right quick, just 22% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Hit thumbs up as it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. Follow me on Instagram and X at Hoops, and I'll follow you back. Thank you for your support. You're appreciated tremendously. For years, the criticism for Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown's been prevalent. Speaking on his relationship with Brown, Tatum said, quote, Me and JB are brothers. The media always tries to split us apart, but me and JB are brothers for life. Here's just a bit of how the media's tried to split up Boston's league best duo. You have to break up the duo of Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. It's time to break it up for this reason. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are in this unofficial standoff for who's supposed to be the leader of the team. Six years together, Brown and Tatum, four conference championships, one NBA Finals mm. appearance, no wins. I think that you break up Tatum and Brown. I mean, I brought that up to you. But, you know, it was one of our first questions going into the season. Is this the last time around? for Tatum and Brown. Do you think Tatum and Brown have hit their ceiling together? Hell yeah, they have. And I said it two years ago, and damn it, they made a finals run and everybody was harping on me, but it's time right now. It's time to break up the duo. And I'm saying it with the utmost confidence. When you have been to multiple conference finals, when you have reached the NBA finals, and you see that the way that they play, they don't complement each other well. And by the way, I'm hearing that he's about, he's on the verge of potentially being moved. Obviously, we've all been speculating about that, that he may be moved. They're on the phone. I'm hearing Boston is making some calls. Keep your eye on that. Jalen Brown. The hate for these two doesn't stop with those clips. Shaq would advise Tatum and Brown to be split up last June, saying, quote, I don't want five stars on my team. I want a guy that I can go to every night. I want a guy that's going to lead. And I want three dogs, three others. I would prefer if they were specialists, end quote. Justin Termine tweeted, quote, The Celtics are one of the least fun teams in the league and need to break up the monotony of watching Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown taking turns playing one-on-one -on -one for 48, end quote. Bleacher Report's Jake Fisher wrote how it was definitely the beginning of the end for the Tatum and Brown pairing near the end of 2021. Ultimately, the Jays made all those takes look foolish by getting over the hump and being the top two scorers on the 2024 World Champions. After securing their first career chip in what could be one of many in a potential Celtics dynasty, Jalen Brown responded to the noise back in June. We've been through a lot. You know, we've been playing together for seven years now. We've been through a lot. You know, the losses, the expectations, the media, you know, have said all different types of things. You know, we can't play together. We were never going to win. We heard it all. Um, you know, I mean, we just blocked it out, and we just kept going. Uh, I trusted him, he trusted me, um, and we, we did it together. So, um, you know, to get to this point, you know, and share that experience with JT is, is just awesome. I can't, you know what I mean? It's just amazing, and it feels great. Sickening disrespect for Tatum and Brown has also been put on them from an individual standpoint. Despite winning finals MVP, Jalen Brown was snubbed for Team USA not once but twice after Derek White was picked over him to be Kawhi's replacement. Brown and White were thankfully able to clear the air about that. Additionally, Jason Tatum was barely given minutes by Steve Kerr at the Olympics, even though he was a driving factor to Team USA cruising a gold in 2021. This included Tatum getting benched in the semifinals against Serbia, a game the US barely squeaked out. The Olympic mix-up for Jason and Jalen should act as a primary source of motivation in their attempt to repeat as NBA champions. Instead of Jason receiving respect for becoming the only non-finals MVP to lead a team in playoff points, rebounds, and assists, Tatum was mocked for copying celebrations and has been hated on at every corner by fans rooting against he and the Celtics. 
Really, JT was just paying homage to Kevin Garnett by yelling in his post-game interview, to Stephen Curry for saying what they gonna say now, to Kanye West for saying, I guess we'll never know, among several others. Many took the opportunity to clown JT for doing that, but I thought his way of impulsively celebrating was endearing. It was a nice way of honoring the champions and success stories that came before him. In terms of Tatum being hated on at every corner by fans rooting against he and the Celtics, he was just a bit of the unnecessary shade that's been thrown at him recently. Responding to a screenshot of Tatum rapping on the Jimmy Fallon show, the NBA memes account tweets, Tatum is just giving the haters free ammunition at this point. Notice how he doesn't state what ammunition that is, he's just eager to hate. Responding to a clip of Tatum predicting a rematch of the Celtics and Mavericks in the 2025 finals, this Mavs fan calls Tatum a role player, tweeting, Yeah, he's getting shot up the list to the number one spot of my favorite role players for this. Good work. I get it's a joke, but if you think Tatum's a role player on any level, you're beyond a casual. This Mavs fan base page is taking shots at Tatum for leading the playoffs in plus minus in an attempt to prop up Luka's greatness, who led the playoffs in every other category. There's no need to tear down one player in order to prop up the other. Also, plus minus is a pretty important stat. And lastly, this goes to show how few and far between the love for Tatum is, as popular X account Legion Hoops deleted a tweet respecting Jason, where it reported a comparison of Tatum to a five-time champion and all-time great, calling Jason the wing version of Tim Duncan. Despite being deleted by Legion Hoops, that report relating Jason to Tim was a great one. Given Tatum and Duncan's win-at-all-cost mantras and willingnesses to sacrifice shot attempts for the greater good are extremely similar, not to mention their ability to turn on superstar mode when need be. It's easy for haters to get jealous of a player that's accomplished everything Tatum has, from being on the cover of 2K, to signing the largest contract in NBA history, to winning both a gold medal and championship in the span of under two months. Haters have a lot of ammunition to be envious about. From a team perspective, since it became a theme on this channel after the Raptors won it in 2019, I've heavily covered each of the six champions since then, and there seems to be a general lack of respect for these champions more than any other I've covered over the last five years for one reason or another. Many say that the Celtics just played easy teams, but you could say that about almost any team from any year. Injuries are always going to be a thing and you play who's in front of you. Everyone except for those with raging biases knows that as I could cover in a separate video respecting the champs, which is what we like to do on this channel. The Celtics more than played and beat whoever was in front of them. They obliterated the competition put in front of them and set records in the process. In addition to the easy path to a title claims, the Heat fanbase posted an old graphic which portrays their team as having the most wins in the East since 2010, while Statmuse's updated version shows us the Celtics now have 112 playoff wins since then, the most in the association. Also, despite making less than 28% of his threes in the finals against Boston, former Celtic Kyrie Irving changed his Instagram profile picture to a pic of him standing on the Celtics logo. But I'm sure the Celtics personnel, organization, and fan base are used to the hate by now, as the disrespect for Boston in 2024 stemmed from before the finals, where every mainstream talking head was picking against them, as portrayed by this montage by the Celtics' goaded social media team, Shout out to Brett Hampton. And here's what I'm going to tell you today. I got the Dallas Mavericks. I think there's going to be a parade in Dallas. Who'd you guys really beat, though? Who'd you really beat? I have Dallas. I think Dallas will win. So obviously I'm going with Dallas. Shh. Dallas. I got Dallas winning. I think Dallas is deeper. I don't think Boston is deep at all. I like Dallas in this series. It's an easy choice for me. Dallas. Shh. The Boston Celtics have not seen anything Despite close the fact that Boston to what America the Dallas the best Mavericks team in the or one of the two best players on this floor will be Luka and Kyrie. You're just a very good team that could get to the finals but won't win it. Shh. But it's no longer what could be or what 